Your process of developing the paintings out of preliminary drawings, does that work more as a refinement of the imagery, or does the imagery and the concept grow in complexity as you uh, complete the drawings and move on to the paintings? Well, I think the drawings, the drawings are, are relatively simple. Uh, so, the drawing certainly is, is a kind of a way of capturing the image and exploring it. Um, once I want, uh, kind of lay the line down in the drawing, I don't elaborate too much on it. Usually there'll be sort of initial impression or a kind of a first rough um, once over for the drawing and then I'll go back and refine the composition or add things that I feel bring out the emotion in the drawing or um, highlight or strengthen the composition in some way. But, it's really just a question of that initial kind of capturing. So there isn't too much development of complexity. Okay. And then when I move to the painting, it's a very similar process. Um, I usually have a sense of the composition that comes out of the drawing and essentially what, what the intent of the drawing is from a content perspective. And then I essentially do the drawing again, but in paint on a big scale. So the scale changes things. So there's obviously a lot of um, improvisation, you know, as I move kind of from one medium to the next, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's, it's elaborate collaboration. Uh, in fact, maybe moving into the painting is simplification because the lines tend to be thicker. When you have the source drawing and you have now you've committed to putting it onto canvas, do you have essentially a budget of lines that are going to go onto the canvas and you're not going to exceed that budget? Uh, it's a matter of density. Uh, so I draw to a density. Um, if that, I'm not sure if that's clear. But uh, when I draw, I will very often get an initial drawing out, and then my impression is there are not enough lines there. Uh, it's too open, too sparse, or it hasn't gelled. And then I'll draw some more and try to get the density that feels right. Uh, on some occasions, and I've gotten better at this, I will go too far. Mm -hmm. So Teddy gave me this challenge, which is where have I painted back out of it being too dense? And, and I really am much better at that, so I have to kind of go back to earlier paintings. But and this is one that I feel reasonably good at showing and explaining. I mean, if you look at this painting, it's a pretty dense painting, actually, for me. And if you look carefully, because uh, I can't... I'm not too great at matching my paint mixtures. You'll actually see that there are passages of white paint that are covering up colored areas and elements of drawing kind of throughout this. Things where I might I cut across here to open up the space or clean up the space down here. So, and then here's an interesting one because up here, I kind of went way overboard and had all of this color and density happening up here. But I wanted to pull back on that, but I pulled back with this sort of transparent blue, which then kind of let the underpainting show through, which I was pretty happy with, actually, because it created some interesting... So it's a very nice effect. It's sort of a raftered sky yeah. up there, right? Yeah, and it's the kind of these circusy colors, and there's a kind of funny thing that happens here, how it interacts with the blue and the patterns in the back. So that was removing density of the way, even though it's going to a darker color, um, but with some other effects. Okay, and when was this painting? Uh, this is probably um, in 2010. 2010, Sometimes okay. Toward the end of 2010, I'd say. And how does this body of work compare with the work that you made earlier uh, in your career? How, how has the painting developed? Well, it's changed over time. So, uh, I mean, we can go back to, like, the Middle Ages, you know, when I was in graduate school, and um, that was, it was had some similarities, actually. I was using figures in silhouette, where the inside of the silhouette and the outside of the silhouette were abstract, so it actually has some relation to some of the work that I'm doing now, kind of post this. Mm -hmm. um, I started painting again seriously about six years ago, Mm -hmm. And so I went through really a whole series of iterations of abstract kind of vocabularies. 
uh, and then it's only in the past maybe two or three years that I reintroduced figuration, and in the past maybe year, the human figure back in. So even like this canvas is um, not at the latest because there's no human figuration. This has got the drawing element, but then most of the show has got people in the paintings. Mm -hmm. Which was really what the title was about. It was sort of this period of demarcation between when I started introducing the figure into painting, and then up through the current. Was moment. was it difficult to introduce the figure? Did you have to think about that or struggle against that? Uh, most of this is emerging uh, half born from my psyche. So uh, I'm more responding to uh, what feels like an emotional or an impulse to do something. So here are two uh, drawings, Philadelphia Angels, right. which are, I think, a good example of the process that you've described. Mm -hmm. uh, and what was the source material for, for this? Okay, so um, Karen Cooper, my wife, uh, takes photographs, great photographs around the city. And she was in a great big old antique store, lighting store, down further down Frankfurt. And she took a bunch of photographs from the interior. These were two actually of a sculpture. This is a sculpture of an angel embracing a woman. And uh, I used that as source material for the drawing. Okay, and, and that pretty much caught your, something hooked your attention and yeah. you started drawing it more than once also. Right, right. Well, and that was a situation really, which has happened sometimes where I, I get, uh, hung up on an image and I need to explore it more and I actually did several of these are two of them but there's a couple others okay so sometimes when I can't really exhaust an image I'll go back and draw it several times till I feel like really kind of got into my psyche you have processed it I processed yeah exactly okay. I processed it well and, and this was a pretty significant painting actually this is the demarcation point of the demarcation show uh, so what happened was I hadn't included the figure in any of my drawings or paintings up to that point. And the figure snuck in via that drawing because that was a drawing of an inanimate figure as a sculpture. I thought it was an object and then I drew it and uh, still thought it was an object. And then I had been painting on these squares, like some of the work here are these two by twos. I've been doing that for a couple of years, sort of this discipline of painting within the square. And matching them up like crossword puzzles. And I had a very strong desire to paint a large canvas, which is something that I hadn't done then in a few years. So, large canvas. Um, first went at it with the background color fields like I described. I kind of knew that I was going to use that drawing. And then I drew into it and ended up using the two colors for the drawing, which you can see, which just felt like the right balance. Uh, you can also see, like, if you look at this image versus the drawings, like what I mentioned before, that the drawing gets a lot simpler. You couldn't have that complexity. Or the painting gets The painting simpler, is simpler, right? right. The drawing right. is much more complex than the right. painting. So there's all this uh, improvisational editing out that happens, because the painting took 10 minutes, right? I mean, the, Black ones. Right. Right. Minutes, right. Very fast. Um, so I painted this and with the figures, and then when I was done, I said, oh, I used uh, figures in painting. That, that kind of just opened it up and became conscious, and um, everything after that had people in it. Okay. Everything after that became humanized right. or populated. Right. Right. Uh, does that bring up any questions of narrative for you? Yeah, well, I think what it, it it's, um, you could probably, and I have, which I'm not sure I want to talk about, but I've psychoanalyzed it, but uh, it's essentially, um, I think, a to me, a kind of a journey to meaning in a way. And so what I realized is that to really get the meaning that I wanted out of the painting, that the human meaning and the interaction of people and the situations that they're in is, you know, to me very real, tangible, and that uh, would be very satisfying to capture that in a painting. So the construction of meaning, I guess at a certain point may have required 
Um, yeah, yeah. It just it got to a point where it called for that. Like the abstraction was not hitting what I wanted in the in the expression. 